Hello and welcome to Underdogs, Bootstrappers, and Game Changers. This is for those of you that are starting with nothing and using business to change their stars. Motivating people who disrupted industry standards. This is the real side of business. This isn't Shark Tank. My aim with this podcast is to take away some of the imaginary roadblocks that are out there. I want to help more underdogs because underdogs are truly who change the world. This is part of our Content for Good initiative. All the proceeds from the monetization of this podcast will go to charitable causes. It's for the person that wants it. Hello and welcome to another episode of Underdogs, Bootstrappers, Game Changers. So you all seem to love it when I have my personal friends in the studio. So I got my man Gino here today. How's it going? Oh man, so glad to have you here. We have such amazing conversations. And so I'm so excited to like kick this off today. And the theme of today is going to be the hard work is actually the shortcut. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, Gino is a personal friend of mine, works in the mind, works in the body, works in fitness. And I can actually uh, tout Gino a little bit. And that's what's great about like when I have friends in the studio. I've never mentioned a book Mm -hmm. that I have read that you have not read. Mm -hmm. That's pretty astounding to me. You got to work on yourself, you know, in all forms. And, you know, it's interesting because I didn't pick up reading probably till about COVID. You know? Is that right? And then uh, once COVID hit, I read about like 150 books. Like uh-huh. I just started diving in self development, business, marketing, just like anything that started catching my attention. Yeah. Um, and anything that like was written well, we'll say. Yeah. Because one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was like, it's never too late to put down a bad book. You know? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm the type that I'll like struggle through it no matter what. I don't know. I, like, I have, I've like, this is not a good thing either. I was just talking about this yesterday with grit. You know, like when you have no quit in you, like sometimes you don't quit things that you're stupid, right? You like stubborn a, with it. Yeah, like a bad <laughs> book or a bad movie. I will sit through a bad movie and I don't know why. There's something in me that is like, it's quitting, you know, or it could get better, you know, like, I don't know what it is exactly. I it's, a, it's a heavy tolerance, you know, yeah. that just goes to, that attributes probably to what you experience in life too, you know? You know, and that's like... Um, grit on its own. Like, I believe, like, I know you're gritty, you know, you're a hard worker, you've come from nothing, you know, it's like, I, how much of your success is built on grit? All of it. (laughs) I mean, you know, I I would say, you know what, I can't say all of it because Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, uh, luck and opportunity meet people that are prepared, you know, and I think people that are actually out there doing something and going in the right direction and not going against the grain of their character. I think those things come into your life very easily. Right. But I would say that, you know, kind of like to your point is like, if you're not working hard to begin with, right, you're not really going to get very far, but you need to work hard in the right direction. And that's one of the hardest lessons I learned was my first business, you know, it's like, and by all accounts to everybody, it was a success, you know, like famous clients, you know, like multiple locations, like gave me kind of a brand, you know, that sort of stuff. But in my mind, like, especially immediately after, like, and I sold it, you know, but it still felt like a failure to me because I'm like, well, I didn't build Pixar. I didn't build that. And it like my opportunity cost was what I was really analyzing. But it's like when you're gritty, you don't know how to quit something. Mm -hmm. And that was like the hardest part for me is like I knew it didn't align with me after about year four. Right. But it's like it felt like quitting to not do it anymore. You know, it's like I mean, that's a whole nother episode is like when grit can actually be a bad or good thing. Yeah, you're trapped in it. Yeah. You know, and that's actually I made a video yesterday about analyzing things, you know, stopping this thing at the gate before you allow it in. And that can be a business, really analyzing the business and what you want out Mm -hmm. of it. Because if you're gritty and you have no quit, then it's like you won't quit even a bad business or bad business Mm -hmm. idea. So you really have to stop it at the gate and analyze it first. Or love, you know, even. Like letting people in your life that aren't smart. Because if you have a big heart and you have no quit in you, you won't quit them. And actually Mm -hmm. those might not be good people for your life. So... I think, you know, also comes down to some self-awareness too. Yeah. You know, I mean, like if you're not positioning yourself into the right environments and around the right people, yeah. right, in right situations, well, you're going to wonder why you feel lost. You know, I, I have a story I, I tell the clients all the time about like the camel in the zoo. Yeah. You know, it's basically about how this mother camel, and this baby camel have a conversation and, you know, the baby camel is just curious about why it has all these things that the, it can use for the desert and they live in the zoo. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it doesn't make sense. It's out of context, out of environment. So like self-awareness, I think positioning yourself properly you know, and not just trying to grind through everything really yeah. can be to your advantage. And you know, like you said, you had to learn that the hard way. You know, and like, it's such a double-edged sword that way too. And that's why I think you got to work with this. I mean, even in like, 
not that I ever want to give dating advice. So no bachelor that's 43 years old that should, but I would tell people out there in the world, it's like vet them a little bit here first. Does oh, it make absolutely. sense as a connection? Because then once they get into your heart, you can't control what your heart's going to do. Right. You know, like have some logic to it or business or anything else. Oh, so. there's, there's also trauma bonding and value bonding. Right. So like yeah. if you're bonding based on a personal trauma, sure. Well then, I mean, that's a very toxic relationship. And most of the time, we don't even know it, right? Uh, you like, don't. You don't. We until, just think until other somebody else points it out. Most <laughs> yeah, of the time, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with them? You know, you know like uh, what I really wanted to get to today was like I know you. Do, we talk with the, about this a little bit here and there. It's like I deal with a lot of stuff doing the pro bono consulting with the business people, mm -hmm. you know, or like dispelling myths. I'm sure you dispel a lot of myths these days. Of like, course, yeah. And, and especially I see your content. And one thing I have to applaud you on why we I have you here today is your bravery. Like you like. It's not easy to say actually the exact way you feel on social media. Mm -hmm. I like well, actually I want to go there for a second. How do you get so brave doing that? It's just transparency. I, I I also think it comes down to just being being fed up with facades. Yeah. You know, like playing characters. Yeah. And I, I think um what I'm able to like project on camera is I, I do think it's very authentic to who I am. Yeah. Right. But it only got that way because I had to force myself to get there. Right? Yeah. It's, it, it, you know, it's not something like we were mentioning it's grit. It's, it's grinding hard sometimes through those times of like, where you feel insecure or like where you feel like something's holding you back, like a resistance. Sometimes it's very hard to get through that. But sure. On the other side of it, when people say like, well, how did you do it? Well, it's like, I could, I can't give you a roadmap exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. wish I could, but even in business, like you could, you could say, hey, there's certain milestones that you want to look for in businesses or certain ways to like create metrics and analyze a business, yeah. but there is no right way. No. Right. There's it's like divergent thinking. You could there's many different solutions to the same problem. Sure. Right. So I think when it comes to just being authentic on camera, I, it really comes down to just uh, taking some time to reflect and be self-aware. What's important to you? What are your values? And that's when compassion really comes out. Right. Like the fervor in your voice and like the confidence really come out and the transparency really come out like when you're connected with something. And I think for me, it's always been like I need to be connected with this message because I know there is people that need to hear it. And there's yeah. other people online that will tell you any bullshit just to yeah. get your attention. You that's know? that's like one of the biggest things. And that's what actually got me over the fear gaze of all that. You know, it's mm -hmm. like like I have an undergrad in biochemistry. I'm a fitness nut. You know, it's like I like I know business really well. I've got my ass kicked enough to like learn it really, really <laughs> well. You know, I've helped a lot of people, advised a lot of people. You know, it's like and then you just see this horrible, horrible content online. Mm -hmm. You know, was that one of the things, too, for you? It's like you see, like I see stuff in fitness that's going to hurt people. Oh, yeah. I see stuff in out. business that's going to bankrupt people. It's mm -hmm. like, was that a lot of what got you yeah, there? That's that's true, actually. Have you ever taken a Myers-Briggs personality test? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, I'm a debater. Right? Okay. It's an ENTP. So like when I see something that like flares me up, like yeah. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't help it because it's like, it, it's almost like, uh, I, and let me tell you, I, I'm actually extremely introverted in nature, except when that turns on in me for some reason, <laughs> right? Because when I see people misinforming and exploiting people and yeah. like bullying people, it really flares me up yeah. like it, it, because it frustrates me. It makes me reflect back to a time where like I was lesser and I was weaker yeah. and I had to deal with that, yeah. right? And like, you know, living in neighborhoods and growing up in places to where like a wrong look can get you assaulted yeah right like just looking in someone's direction sure right so like having to experience that right was also kind of the thing that was the impetus we'll say yeah. to help push me into this platform and say like look i need to speak up about this stuff because i know what it's like to experience it now i'm on the other side yeah you know and i would like to say that you need to experience some of it because sure. i think it makes you a strong person you know, I think it builds character. I you know? agree with you. Absolutely. I agree with everything you just said. I mean, the adversity gets you there. You know, it's like, I'm like you, you know, it's like, it wasn't so much that people were making money off of it. You know, like that is in itself, like kind of weird, but like overall it was like, I didn't want some poor kid out there wasting his time or his money, you yeah. know? And like, and that message usually isn't for like somebody with a lot of success and a rich dad, because they go out and they say, Hey dad, what do you think of this horrible financial advice? Mm -hmm. And they're like, that's stupid. You know, otherwise it's some kid from the ghetto that goes, Hey, I'm going to do that thing, you know, mm -hmm. that because the course guru said, and now they've taken the biggest part of what their life is, and that's their opportunity mm -hmm. cost, you know. And so, so that's why I started working in business too. It's like to your point where you're working in fitness is like somebody had to be out there telling the truth, and like, tell me what I know you're going to say today. Let's talk about the hard work. <laughs> like, why is that the shortcut? <laughs> uh, that's that's fascinating, I, I, and I think it's because you need to be application focused. 
right? Because knowledge in theory only gets you so far, mm -hmm. right? We'll say you can read about how to exercise, you know, you can study everything you want about it, but you, until you actually do it, you don't understand it. Yeah. Right. Until you actually understand what that force feels like applied to your body. Yep. Right. And like what that feels like on both a ment mental, physical, and emotional level to where you don't feel like you can do something anymore. Yeah. Right. I don't think you can fully build wisdom and confidence in anything you do unless you go through that hard work and that application. Agreed. Right. So it's, it's very difficult for people because they like to sit on the sidelines and just try to educate themselves because access to knowledge is free now. Yeah. Which is interesting because it becomes a sell point in what I do. It's like, hey, if information is free, why do you still look the way you do? You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> but, you know? Uh, but what's interesting about that is like, you know, it's you will never fully learn and understand something and build a large capacity in anything that you do until you actually have to grind through the hard times of it. I agree. Right. And that comes through application. It's not going to come through learning and educating yourself yeah. all the time on it. I mean, that, and that's the hardest part, too. It's like, do you have any advice for people out in the audience, like how to vet the bad versus the good information? You know, if they're new. Th that's interesting. I don't think uh, I don't think, you know, until you know. Yeah. Right. I don't think, you know, until you know, but the, the one rule that I live by is like a 30 to 70 rule. It's like by this old general. I forget who it was exactly. Uh -huh. But they said you need to know at least 30 percent of the information, but no more than 70 because you're waiting too long to make a decision now. That's actually incredible <laughs> advice because I believe anything in business, you should know at least a little bit about it. Like SEO, accounting, marketing, these are places where creepy crawly companies dwell, right? Because people don't know that much about them. Mm -hmm. So I meet people all the time. I spent $60,000 on my website, my SEO guy, they get zero organic hits, for instance. And so like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I agree well, with you completely. Way. Know enough, right? And then like when you first start in business and that's what a lot about what we talk about is like bootstrapping, right? You mm -hmm. got to know it all. But then when you get to the point where you're working on your business, at least know the 30% so you can manage it and know if you're getting robbed or not. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Because like you were mentioning too, even when like I came to you to ask you for some advice when it came to accounting, it's like, where's your margin sitting? Like, you know, where are things leaking from your business? It's like, yeah. you may not know this stuff until you actually collect information on it and look at it. Totally. Because and you could be holes in it. It's kind of like, I, I, I describe it this way that's very boring, unfortunately, but it's like when you struggle with a math problem, mm -hmm. you know, it's like if you struggle with a math problem for a couple minutes, it's actually good for you because you've had to think about it, right? And then somebody comes by and they kind of save you a little bit, right? Like, hey, why don't you try this next? And you struggle through the rest of the math problem and now you really learned it, right? If somebody saves you too quickly, then you didn't get to struggle with it enough to learn it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the same with accounting and other stuff. It's like, you have to have that data. You have to have a little bit of that struggle at times, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong. You could go out there and learn it from the start too. But honestly, it's almost better when you've had that struggle. Mm -hmm. That's when I started to embrace counting too. I had some struggles with it. And then finally, you know, it's like, I'm like, no, screw this. I'm tired of dealing with bad CPAs, bad bookkeepers. And like, I don't know anybody better at managerial accounting now than me. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's come a long way from a guy that started ripping apart cars in his backyard, keeping receipts as his first, you know, like accounting system, you know? And so, um, so you have to have maybe that struggle to really like appreciate it too. You know, I think that's actually a good analogy for business too. I mean, because it's like a lot of people want to get into entrepreneurship, but we call them entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, most people that are entrepreneurs, it was out of necessity. Yeah. Like they, it is out of survival. It's like, guess what? You can't work for someone else. You know, you don't, no matter what you do, for some reason, you're repulsed by that environment. Like, you know, it, it's like not that you can't do a good job in what you do, but there's a personal unrest inside of you that yeah. just can't be quelled, you know? And I think the only way to really do that is to like go through the process of having to learn it and grind it out. Sure. And you work know? it, you know, I like, I appreciate you saying that today. It actually kind of made my day because it's like, sometimes I wonder why I did this, you know? It's like, <laughs> you were it's forced to, the, yeah. It, and it's not the easiest life, but yeah, like to your point, it's like, like I was pushed into entrepreneurship. I didn't think it was for me. You know, I didn't think I was the type of person that could so do was it. I. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and then after that, it was like, now you have no choice. Once you have success in business, you're not getting a job anymore. No, no. Nobody's going to hire you. No, because it comes down to your time, really. I yeah. mean, there's two things that I, I try to tell people in a coaching setting that you should prioritize. That's your energy and time. Yeah. Right. Some people try to prioritize material possessions or like status. It's like, yeah. dude, energy and time, the two most important things. Yeah. Right. Like if you don't protect those two things and you don't conserve them, yeah. right? Like, well, then you're going to have a very miserable life, yeah. right? Because the time thing comes from, if you're working a salary, it doesn't matter how hard you work in that hour, you're still getting paid the same. Totally. In business, if you work harder, you can get paid more from it. Absolutely. It's more performance-based. Yeah. Now, some people don't work very well in that setting, and they need to have something stable, you know, and, you know, something more predictable. 
But for Amen. those of you who don't, absolutely, you thrive. And that's the like actually that goes into like approaching the hard, right? It's like I was just on somebody's podcast yesterday, and he built his business from nothing. He's got a huge business now, you know. Like I don't want to let his. I better not say some of the stuff he's working on. Like he got an email from one of the biggest entrepreneurs in the country for a, a thing he's working on right now. Like incredible guy built it, and like he says the exact th same things I hear every really successful entrepreneur say. It's like worked a hundred dollar weeks, gave up dating for years, gave up life, gave up. And then like, now I have this, you know, it's like, so those of you out there that think like you're seeing the social media shortcut, like, I don't know anybody that's taking the social media shortcut. Oh, no. And what's interesting is even the people that you believe did take the social media shortcut, will say like YouTubers, right? Like yeah. you get them that flip on a switch one day and make uh, $2 million overnight. Yeah. Right. Um, and they're like 20 years old. They've never seen that money before, but yeah. they spent 10 years building their audience. Mr. You know? Beast, um, 450 videos before hitting 10,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, or Matt Reif, I talk about him quite often. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, it's like he was 10 years on the comedic circuit and he put one video on TikTok and it just happened to go viral. You know, it's like, so that's another point. It's like he had to do that grind. You know, he wouldn't have been to that clip if he had not done the 10 year grind. It's you hard until it's easy. Totally. It's hard until it's easy. The tipping point. Have you ever read that book, Malcolm Gladwell? I know Malcolm Gladwell, but I didn't read that. I book. got you on one. Uh, this uh, is the first uh, one I've ever got you on. <laughs> you should check it out. But it's like life doesn't like just steadily do things. Life does something and then all of a sudden there's a tipping point to it and boom, you know, and that's what success does too. It's like it makes you walk up this huge hill and then all of a sudden it gives it to you, you know? That's interesting. My wife actually just spoke to me about this the other day because she plays a lot of instruments, right? And she wow. plays violin. So she'll be playing violin and like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And then she goes to bed and then the next night it makes sense. It's like your brain was able to cope that information overnight now yeah but like at one point it'll just flip yeah you know and you think it's going to happen in a shorter timeline than it actually does yeah right or maybe vice versa depending on the situation yeah but like most of the time it's like when you even when you read a book the application of that knowledge will come further down the line totally it's not you're not going to read something i'm apply that right now yeah right it, that's just not the case with most reading because it's more about the mindset behind it right and also people in business and you know this just as well as i do is like they'll they think retrospectively about their business they say oh here's what you should do it's like well that's not what you did yeah <laughs> right that's not, yeah i want to uh, know what you did when you were starting exactly. because where was your mindset how did you feel emotionally like sure you know like what were the problems that you were dealing with back then and how did you manage them right yeah. i don't want to know what you would do now what that you built the confidence in this sure what would you do back then yeah absolutely you know? and nobody believed in you at the time and like how'd you do, deal with that it's like now you go out and it's like there's a certain let's talk about this for a second too it's like there's a certain confidence to when you get to that level right like look i believe i don't know if you believe this michael jordan is the best in the world because he believed first he was the best mm -hmm. in the world Mm -hmm. And it's like, it takes some time even in business. I think business, it works that way too, to a certain extent, right? You can, you can get delusional, you know, and like, you know, go off on like bad, you know, business decisions and things like that. But overall, like that confidence does help you in business too, oh, because definitely. you have to make those strategic decisions with confidence. Irrational confidence. Like yeah. Sometimes. I mean, it's really what pushes you through because a lot of the things that look at, uh, Elon Musk was a CEO of five companies or something. Yep. Like you got to be insane to do that. Yeah. Like you got to have like something, some screw has to be slightly loose inside your head. Yeah. So when people start to idolize some of these figures, yeah. right? Like they have the wrong idea in mind, right? You're Agreed. never going to be like that person because they're an anomaly. Yeah. Right. So no matter what you do, even if you followed their path directly, you'll never get to where they went. No. You know? and, and the other problem is that I see with it is like define your own success. You know, we're like <clears throat> so often like this is what success is because like, honestly, it's marketing. Like spend billions of dollars telling us what success is. So you buy the car, you buy the watch, they buy the clothing. Folks, when you want that stuff, you've been marketed to. That's what it is. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. it's like, and people don't realize it. It's crazy. You know, it's like, so you have to sit down and you have to decide what's Gino's success? What's Tyler's success? And I have my own definition and now you make that fall in line, right? Mm -hmm. And my definition is like, sure, I don't wanna worry where my next meal's coming from. That's mm -hmm. miserable, I've been there before. I don't want to do that, right? And like, I don't wanna worry about like having a, a rat infested building to live in. You know, yes. I've done that before too, you know? It's like, but like, I feel importance in helping people. I feel importance in changing the things when I've changed and to Elon's point, you know, like him or hate him, you know, it's like, I feel that's the level he's at. 
You know, I don't think it's about the money at all. I now like it probably was in the initial like PayPal era and things like that. I want the money. I want the fancy cars. He actually did all that, you know, and then like now look, he brags about living in a $50,000 house, mm -hmm. you know, and he works on these companies that he feels are going to change the things that he's passionate about. Like, like him or hate him on Twitter, what he's doing, he <laughs> says is free speech. That's what he believes. That's why he's doing it. That's yeah, a value system that yeah. he's starting to express. It's interesting about the success thing you were mentioning too, because, uh, uh, one of the questions I like to ask people is like, you know, how do you define success in your life? And like, what Great. metrics do you use to measure it? Beautiful. You know, and it's a question that I feel like a majority of people I've ever met have never answered fully because there is no direct answer to that. It's like, no. what are, it's like, explain to me what love is to you. you yeah. Know? It's like, it's such a subjective sort of answer. Totally. And like they, people haven't reflected enough to give you an accurate response to that. Yeah. You know, which makes me feel like sometimes it's just, they're living reactionally instead of like responsively. How can you even put yourself on the path to that if you don't know what it is? <laughs> yeah. I tell you, remember the movie, Happy Gilmore? Oh yeah. And he closes his eyes and he's got like, find your happy place. He's uh -huh. got the woman beautiful with the beer and grandma's oh, in yeah. the corner. You know, it's like, I tell people like sillyly, you know, close your eyes, define your success place, mm -hmm. at least like kind of gauge. And we'll never know exactly, but what does that look like a little bit? Because I believe in aligning your journey to something, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and I believe like you believe the shortcut is actually the hard work, mm -hmm. but first you got to, you got to align like, okay, what is that success? Yes. What is that a goal, you know, or whatever. And now you can set up, it's actually easy once you know the goal, because mm -hmm. now you can align everything in your life in every level to that goal. And it's your best chance of accomplishing it. And you'll never know what the road is because I was just seeing, reading, it was like a Taoist monk that was like uh, kind of speaking on this Instagram post the other day, my wife sent me uh -huh. and he was like, you know, when you're on the path, when everything becomes dark, you know, yeah. because it, when you're on the actual path, it means it's not lit already for you. Yeah. Right. Which means you're discovering new territory, which yeah. sometimes is scary for people because the uncertainty makes them want to go backwards. Totally. But you're the one holding the torch. Yeah. Right. Instead of the torch being held, you know, for you to follow. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's scary for people. A lot of people turn around when they hit that point. Well, I think a lot of people want to follow at first, right? And then you get enough confidence. You have a couple things that you've accomplished. You know, you've dealt with all this adversity already, you know, and like, but that's why it's like telling stories like this, like we're doing now is so important for underdogs too. Mm -hmm. It's like, because then like we were the ones on that, that lit path at first, right? Mm -hmm. And now I believe that we're both on this unlet lit path going in our own directions, but we have to talk about that whole story so people can go there too. Oh yeah. Model a mimic. Yeah. You know, like give people the opportunity to see like at least a framework for like how you do something. It doesn't mean you have to follow it A, B, C, and D. Yeah. Right. But it just gives you confidence knowing that other people have done similar things. Absolutely. I think that's one of the key components in success is seeing it possible. Right. It's like, I know you were raised kind of rough, you know, mm -hmm. and like, I think that's one of the biggest tools is finally seeing that successful people are normal. I know you like work around a lot of really successful people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they're normal people, aren't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and like, you know, the fascinating thing is to me is you don't want their problems either. Yeah. You don't want their, a lot of people think, oh man, they have a lavish lifestyle. Yeah. You got to understand, we only have a finite amount of energy, yeah. right? And the way that's distributed could be almost like in uh, like a chart. Like think about like a battery, like it's it's slowly going down with the, all the energy you run out to different things, yeah. right? So when they have a lot of their energy focused in one domain, we'll say in the financial domain, sure. right? They are lacking somewhere else severely. Totally. They're offset. Yeah. Nobody's a perfectly rounded human. No. Right? You just don't have the energy capacity to put everything into everything. You know, I mean, the people I know with the most are the most miserable in life. Absolutely. The people that I know that have found like direction, mission, you know, change, like really define their own success and like very counter to what the world does. Mm -hmm. Like those are the most content people in the world. Non-materialists because they don't put their value externally. They, yeah. they do it internally. I mean, there's Maslow's hierarchy of basic needs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like you have the basic needs, water, food, shelter, that sort of stuff. And then we like the way I take it is like, then we find stuff to bitch about after mm -hmm. we're having those means net. And, you know, and then we like think we're going to get these things that marketing's telling us and that's going to bring happiness. But then you get to a level I think Elon Musk has, and I hope I have it a little bit too, that's transcendence, mm -hmm. where you're seeing that like there's more importance in the world. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, folks, have your success. It's yes. important because that allows you to change the things even better that you're passionate about or have a mission about, you know. I want to make a point to add too. It doesn't have to be the grand Elon Musk thing either. No, it doesn't. You need to find what you can service to humanity. Yeah. You know, even if you're a garbage man, it doesn't matter. Oh, you totally. Know? I like, mean, whatever you can, whatever you can give. The... And that's the thing too, the garbage man out there right now, that's like s working away for his family, going home, making a paycheck, you know, it's like taking care of his people, you know, like uh, raising his kids in a good society, like to be good, 
members of society. Mm -hmm. That in my mind is a hero. That's a person in a thankless position, you know, and he's like doing good in the world and taking care of his family. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, there was a guy actually I knew that trained at my gym for a long time, you know, and like, I looked at him like in awe kind of, you know, you like, I can appreciate when you give up everything in life because I've done it to accomplish a mission, right? And so he'd clean the gym, you know, he lived at the gym and like he was in very low rungs of the UFC. And, you know, I'm like, I'm, I, I thought this guy was amazing. He's given up everything in life, focusing completely on the, like mm -hmm. what he wants to do with his Singularity life. Singularity of focus. Yeah. Like I, I thought it was beautiful until I found out he had five kids with five different women that he wasn't paying child support mm -hmm. on. Then like that flipped that fast in my head. <laughs> you know, I didn't admire him anymore, you know? And so, you know, this is fascinating. You ever read any Robert Greene's books? No. Okay. You're going to, I'm going to, you know, flip your, your script here okay. when it comes to that. So he talks a lot about like, uh, I got, I got me turned on to some, him and some of his books. Okay. Uh, he talks a lot about like being able to identify certain types of people in the world, uh -huh. right? Like when they exhibit certain personality traits, there's a book called the laws of human nature. It's a 600 page book. I read this book three times. Right? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. And, uh, and I, I would have picked up a book like that in the past and be like, hell no. Right. <laughs> but there is so much depth in understanding how to position yourself around certain people in this sort of book, in this context. And since I've been in a coaching setting, I've actually applied all this information information over years because I've seen all these successful people interact with me in an intimate way. Yeah. Um, and then having this is almost like an educational resource now to be able to kind of fill in the gaps and be able to label some of the stuff that's happened to me. Yeah. Man, you could position yourself around people in a totally different way. You know? Go into that more. It's a totally different way. So like, for instance, if you're identifying a certain person with traits, like exhibit, for instance, like toxic narcissism. Yeah. Right. Like, and some people think, man, these people are extremely confident, man. Yeah. They just well-spoken, yeah. you know, but then you don't realize they don't care about anybody but themselves. Yeah. Right. So how is that destructive inside of their workplace environment and the relationships that they have or yeah. any other thing related to something that's not related to them? Sure. You know, so like they become a very destructive person and you may think they have your best interests in mind sometimes, but maybe they don't. Yeah. Maybe it's more about them. You know, so knowing how to position yourself around certain types of people, I think is paramount in the world of business yeah. or in the, in, in just re, your everyday reality. Well, you're going to get something, people that just need to win. Right. Mm -hmm. And like when you're in a business setting, it's like, if you're around somebody that's got to win at all costs, no matter how nefarious, it's like, you got to get out of that. Exactly. You can't yeah. be around those people. Yeah. They'll destroy you no matter sure. what, the, even if they got to self-sabotage to get there. Absolutely. And then you can look for win-wins where your partners, right? It's like you and I do some stuff back and forth, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, like, talk about like what you do, talk about what I do. Mm -hmm. I've appreciated when you've sent people our way and things like that. And it's like, that is being a team, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to win on you. You're not trying to win on me. We're just trying to be good teammates. Well, that's a hard thing to find. It, it has is. people with a good value system. <laughs> You to know? your point, I mean, <laughs> Hitler almost con uh, conquered the world with five people because he had five people on his team. Mm -hmm. Awful human being, right? But he had five people that supported him. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always say it's like, imagine what good can do if five good people could combine together, you know, and really focus. You know, I think a large part of that just has to do, you know, people that have personal loyalty issues, we'll say, or whatever the case may be, whatever you want to label it, yeah. it just comes down to the lack of self-awareness. Yeah. Like they don't understand themselves yet. Yeah. Because when you understand yourself, you develop an intense sense of empathy towards other people. Totally. You know, and I don't think you can get to that point until you're forced to go internally. And I think a lot of people don't have enough life struggles that push them into that domain, like in, inside of yourself. Beautiful. They, they have so such externally uh, focused objectives, right? Yeah. Like I need to get here. They, yeah. they move the goalposts of their happiness. They'll say, oh, I'm going to be happy when I get here. Oh, yeah. I want to get this. I want to get this. I want to get this. Then when you get there, you realize you've created an inclination for hard work in a cycle that you can't get out of anymore. Yeah. Now you're going to be perpetually unhappy unless you're constantly working hard towards something you don't even know what you're working towards. Yeah. And it's it's a scary cycle to watch people go through. And it's just, uh, it comes down to lack of self-awareness. Weigh in on this for me, because mm -hmm. like when you were talking about empathy, it sprung something up in my head that I think about a lot. Did you ever see the um, movie Broken or Unbreakable? Is that what the, was it with an athlete or something? Uh, no, it's got, um, oh, who's the guy that's on everything? He was in Pulp Fiction and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, did, it was his like body made of glass or something. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Glass. Yeah, and then yeah, Bruce yeah. Willis is Mr. Unbreakable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, and so, that. and they basically, the premise is there's got to be a yin and yang to anything mm -hmm. in life. So since Bruce Willis was unbreakable, that means there had to be a human that was super breakable, it's right? It it's like, I think about that with empathy. <laughs> Are some of us in this world, like the overly emphatic mm -hmm. because there is the people that are the serial killers and, and things of that nature of that course. have none of it. There needs to be balance preserved in the world, Yeah, you know, and w which is why I urge you to consider the, the, when people exuberate, uh, like uh, a trait, right. Mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, man, that person's like pushing something like hyper aggression, right. Yeah. They possess the opposite quality. Yeah. They're shielding it. Right. Yeah. It's uh, the persona literally in Latin means mask. 
It means the mask we wear. Our personality is a mask we wear to society. It's not who you are. Your yeah. character is who you are. Sure. Right? So, you know, sometimes when you see that, it's like you can immediately identify, it's like that person is incredibly insecure with their passivity. Yeah. You know, because they have to be hyper aggressive. Yeah. You know, so they want to shield it. They want to hide it from the world because they don't, they feel vulnerable if not. So I think it's interesting to your point is like, you know, there's that yin and yang balance to where like you can even identify this in individuals. Yeah. That's what, I don't know. That's what's so interesting to me about, you know, and I even like tie that to business too. It's like, so empathy, actually, I looked it up, um, can be inherited to some mm -hmm. extent. Oh yeah. Or some, lack so you know where empathy comes from, it comes from mirror neurons in the brain. Go into it. So mirror neurons are something we developed because uh, we're a social animal, uh -huh. right? We communicate with each other. Yeah. Okay. So in order to communicate, we need to have, understand each other, right? Yeah. And how we understand each other is by picking up on, okay, how is their body position? What's their face looking like? Sure. What's the tonality of their voice, right? Those mirror neurons, we can mimic people. And sales, they teach you about mirroring, right? Mirror yeah. the person, mm -hmm. right? So when you're able to mimic somebody, you're able to fully feel what they're feeling. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So like those grow in our brains as we were social animals, like starting off, like, you know, I, I don't really know the timeline, but like, yeah. you know, as we first initiated as a social species up until now, sure. and some people have more than others. So yeah. some people are more inclined to empathy because mirror neurons create empathy in us. It's a third level intelligence. It's like this, say me and you are hunting for something, yeah. right? You know, and there's an animal where say, hey, okay, when you throw that spear right there at that animal, I'm going to go hide over there because that's where it's going to run to. Yeah. You're anticipating two events that haven't even happened yet, and you're thinking in advance. Sure. That's the same thing as empathy, yeah. right? Like, it's like when you're able to understand something to such a deep degree, yep. right? And put, place yourself in that, it's almost like foresight. Yeah. Right? Some people are naturally gifted with it, like to your point. Yep. You know, it's like some people just have more mirror neurons in their brain. Or is it a curse at times? Oh, I absolutely could be <laughs> because it can prevent you from doing things. Sure. You can also be affected by people's negative emotions. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, like, uh, so epigenetics, and I don't want to go too far oh, off yeah. on the trail because we're not having a science, <laughs> you know, like this is a business show, not a science show, but epigenetics, like basically le lending down traits that we never thought we could mm -hmm. have before. Right. And so like empathy being one of them. Right. And so I kind of like came up with this thought that like, and it's based on survival of the fittest a little bit too. It's like, what would be the good traits to have as a 1800s businessman? Mm -hmm. And the answer was you had to be ruthless, right? You could literally, that was the day you could hire a gang to go out and take over a business, mm -hmm. right? Or the robber barons of yesteryear. And so I was like thinking to myself, okay, this was a lack of empathy th too, that actually made them more successful in business. And now they're inheriting that down, not only that, but generational wealth at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so the next generation lacks empathy, has resources, right? Mm -hmm. And we're in this repetitive system. And I actually like to think today that's about to break because mm -hmm. now we actually care more about who we buy from, right? We can't send the thugs out to just take over a business. And I actually think that's gonna change the business environment. Now I got really into the weeds on that, you know, like thinking about empathy and inheritance no, and no, epigenetics, no, no. I but I actually, and I, I wanna believe that deep down in too. It's true though, and I'll explain, I actually have something to add. Go to into it, too. yeah. So there's a, have you ever heard of, um, what's it called? Uh, zeitgeist, the zeitgeist. Yeah. Uh -huh, yep. So the zeitgeist is a generational mood or trend. There's a book called The Fourth Turning, uh -huh. right? So this book basically talks about, the, in history, we used to measure history in 80-year blocks, Yeah. right? In those 80-year blocks, it was something called a saculum, uh -huh. right? There is four periods. There's a high point, there's an uh, awakening, and there's an unraveling, and then there's a crisis period. Huh. We're in a crisis period right now. We're about to end a crisis period. So crisis periods are times of war, like World War II was a crisis period. Yeah. We had even like early 2000s and stuff like that, we had like Zika virus, and uh, not Zika virus, uh, West Nile virus. Yeah. Um, and then we had all like the 2008 housing market crash. We had all these things that were happening, the war in Afghanistan, all these crazy things that were happening in the world. We were in a crisis period. Yeah. Okay. Now, when we turn, we go to a high period. That's post World War II. Think about how the economy took an upswing. Yeah. Right. Everything was, it was good times. Yeah. Right. So it, there's actually businesses that study this sociology. It's like generational patterns and trends. That's how fitness, or not fitness, uh, that's how uh, fashion stays a, a, a over trends. Interesting. Is there study the generational mood that's going to be inherited? Right. Huh. So each generation has their own avatar. Right. Yeah. So, like, for instance, the Elon Musk generation is called the nomad generation. Okay. Right? They're the ones who fix shit and make the world different, hmm. right? Um, and then the ones after that are going to be uh, the millennial generation too. Okay. So the millennial generation or the hero generation. I grew up as a millennial, right? Yeah. I grew up during a crisis period. Yeah. So I grew up during hard times. Yeah. That means when we swing out, when I'm in my working years and we're the leaders of the new world as millennials, yeah. right? We're going to be the people that institute new change. 
right? I'd Lead the world into the next generation. I feel like we're going there. You know, like, like even with, and I'm going to swing it back to this. It's like, even with approaching the hard work, it's like, we talked about like a lot of stuff that got us into social media was seeing these horrible like messages. It's like, buy my $5 course and then you're going to be fit tomorrow. I mean, how many people are coming in the, with the preconceived notion right now because of that sort of social media content into, into work with you? Oh, all the time. Yeah. I mean, and it's because people have an unrealistic expectations of what it takes. Yeah. They don't have any, well, they don't have any awareness around it, right? right? It's like, if you knew nothing, if I knew nothing about cars and I were to go get my car fixed, I could be taken advantage of. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like people exploit that, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'll have people come in sometimes and they'll be like, hey, well, I want to get a, I want to get a six pack. Like, in okay, a week. Yeah. Well, not even, I mean, even if they're like, it may not even be realistic for them in a year. Yeah. It depends on where their bodies are. Yeah. May, maybe genetically speaking, a six pack is an unhealthy body composition for you yep right you have to be at such a low body fat percentage and it's actually detrimental to your hormones and your nervous system yeah right like it will can actually damage your metabolism in a negative way so oh yeah you know some with, when people have unrealistic expectations and they want to come into something and they want a quick result out of it it's like mm -hmm. dude you're, you, you may not be able to get there i yeah. know you've been sold on this message that it's like you got you could do this quick fix in 90 days yeah that's not the case that's where I want to parlay it into business too. It's because it's the same thing. It's like, hey, start your own business. You work your own hours. You know, like you'll make money hand over fist. And it takes years to get there. It's the time. But also, I want to weigh in the fact, like going back to where I changed the subject for a minute, is like, I think the world's a little bit more ready to listen to reality. Are you feeling that way these days? Yeah, I think people are looking for uh, because most people relate to struggles, not successes. Sure, right? People want to understand that you're a human being, yeah. right? You were flawed, right? Yeah. You make mistakes. Like, let me see what your mistakes were, so I could feel like I have less of a pressure on me to be perfect. Sure, right? And I think people are looking for that now because when it's uh, you know who um, uh, Seth Godin is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a, you're a marketer for Yahoo. He talks yeah. about the purple cow. He goes, if you're driving in Texas and you keep seeing cows, first time you're like, whoa, cows. But you yeah. keep seeing cows, keep seeing cows, keep seeing cows. You're not going to stop until you see a purple cow. Yeah. What the hell is a purple cow? Sure. We're so used to seeing advertising and marketing. Yeah. Right? We're flooded with it. Yeah. We just get desensitized to it. We just want to see somebody being authentic. I To your point, I think that's where it's going now. I don't think that people... Completely. There is some still because I know like a lot of my messaging isn't popular. It's like you got to work your ass off, like especially if you're starting with nothing, you're going to have to work harder than everybody else. You know, it's like and then you but I want the message to also be you can have it. You can absolutely have it because you can outwork them mm -hmm. like people by default, like weigh in on this too. people by default are very lazy. Mm hmm. So if you're the one person that's not lazy, you can have success in business. You can have success, well, with your body, with your mind, with fit, uh, with business. It's like that. That's all it takes is the hard work. Mm hmm. That's the shortcut. That is fascinating. I, and I do think there is one caveat to that because, uh, you know, being a coach, like you see a lot of people with a lot of different deficiencies, yeah. we'll say. And we'll say laziness could be one of them, right? Yeah. Now, the thing with laziness is maybe you're lazy because you're in the wrong environment. Yeah. Maybe you're lazy because you're doing the wrong things. Yeah. Because I met people that are workhorses at some things. And then when you put them down in other settings, it's like they don't want to do shit. Yeah. Right. Like they have flares of this drive that come out and then they, it goes away. It's like, well, yeah. of course, it's like a camel in the zoo and in the middle of Detroit and it's snowing. Yeah. It's like, dude, you got like stuff for a hot desert, like you're equipped for a hot desert and you're sitting in a fucking zoo right now. Yeah. Right. So like, of course, you're out of context. Of course, you're going to feel lazy and lethargic and you're not going to feel like you have purpose in your life because you're not even positioned properly. You sure. don't have any self-awareness. Absolutely. That makes sense. A lot of sense. I mean, and that's the thing, too. It's like. Now, folks, when Gino talks about this, I want you to also put business in your mind, too. Mm -hmm. It's like, so you work in the mind mm -hmm. to help them get to their ideal body. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that looks like. And I want them to think about business at the same time. Of course. Time. And I, I'll start off just by saying, I don't want to get too fancy into the science, but I learned yeah. about something a while back called bioenergetics. Mm -hmm. And now bioenergetics is essentially the practice of mind-body unity. Yeah. Now, this is a uh, psych psychiatric practice. They practice this in medicine, right? Psy uh, psychiatrist practices. Mm -hmm. So it's basically saying, like, I could look at someone's posture and I could tell you what they physically or mentally experience inside of their head. Yeah. Right? I could tell you the emotional state they're in. And yeah. I'll show you how this is applied unanimously. What happens when you're confident people, uh, when you want to be confident, what do people tell you to do? Stand put up. your chest up, put mm -hmm. your chin up, walk yeah. tall. Yeah. Cause the positioning of your body will dictate the emotional state that you feel. Tony Robbins talks about this all the time. Yeah. Right. So I realized very quickly early on that, look, this is more than just changing the way people are physically. It's changing the way they are emotionally and yeah. mentally too. And if you can't work on all those domains, then you're not going to fix somebody. Yeah. Right. 
Because I, I'll give you an example. If, if a ship is sinking and you're just taking buckets of water and you're dumping it out, right? Yep. Until you fix the holes, it's not going to stop sinking. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of problems that aren't being fixed and addressed that are actually causing more harm, right? Yeah. So for instance, when people are in a setting of fitness, right? Yeah. Like maybe uh, I ask them, you know, uh, why are you having trouble with losing weight? Well, usually what it ends up being is because they have no entertainment outlet. So they find it in food. Yes. They have a high stress lifestyle. So they find their entertainment value in food. They yeah. get the dopamine hips from there. Yep. Right. So the problem isn't that you just need to do more cardio and you need to exercise and you stop eating shitty foods. It's dude, you need to find something to entertain yourself with first. Yep. Because if you don't, then it'll never be fixed and addressed. So when I work with people as a coach, we'll say, yeah. it's a lot more comprehensive than saying, here's some workouts. Dude, yeah. anybody could do that. Yeah. You could look that stuff up on the internet. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like when I'm here, you're a human being that's flawed and you need help and assistance. Sure. And sometimes you just lack a little bit of awareness around what the problem is because you need someone with a bird's eye view that could say that's the problem. Yep. Just like a business consultant. It's the same thing. Absolutely. It totally is. And like what I want people to get out of that too is like, to your point, it's like the environment. What are you suited for? Mm -hmm. Your mission, what, what do you want to actually do? It's like if you're in the wrong environment, the wrong mindset, the wrong business, you know, that's going to be a harder work effort for you, mm -hmm. you know? And so like, that's why a lot of people just jump into business to start a business, right? Because that's what they're being told online. Yes. They don't think enough about what that business is. They don't think about what they want their future to be. They don't think about what they want their success to be. It's like, I always tell them, I'm like, what's the business? Why are you starting a business? What is your ultimate life goal in life? And tell me how this business gets you there. Mm -hmm. Is this business the thing? Or is it they, like, it, you can talk me into, okay, I'm going to do this for three years. I'm going to sell it and it's going to get me into the next thing that might be the thing, right? Yeah. You can tell me that. But that all has to do with exactly what you're talking about. Setting yourself up with success for your own talents, your own energies, your own um, desires. You know, that's what business is too mm -hmm. for success. Hey, you got to find your fit, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, a lot of people are, want to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. I want to own a business. What yeah. does that mean? Yeah. What does that do? Well, okay, you own a business. What now? Yeah, exactly. What's the point? That's a, my exact point. And they'll look at YouTube and the top uh, hits for 2024 businesses, and they'll open a business that has no alignment, that doesn't offer anything in their skill set, and they'll wonder why they're not doing well at it, mm -hmm. right? But now if they stay and they focus, kind of like what you're talking about, and they work on the actual problem, then the offset is going to be success in everything, right? Exactly. Because well, so, you're working in alignment with yourself now yeah. instead of against yourself. Yeah. And like, that's a big thing is like, I try to tell people like, it, it, you know, not just in business with fitness or with health, with anything in life. Yeah. It's like, if you're working against your, the grain of your character, you're yeah. always going to fail. Totally. You're always going to fail. And you're going to wonder why, why that, why is this so hard and I'm not getting anywhere? Yep. See, because dude, you're, you're a sports car on a dirt road right now. Yep. You know, it's you're, like, you got to reposition yourself. I mean, that happens in fitness a lot, right? Like I had this buddy, he's 300 pounds or something mm -hmm. like, but not like, you know, like what do you want to say, obese or anything like that? Strong guy, right? Weight on him, a strong guy. And he would bike like 200 miles a day. He's crazy, you know, like always bike riding and stuff. And he used to try to constantly lose weight. And I'm like, and maybe this is bad advice. You're the fitness coach, not me, but it's like, dude, go with what you are. <laughs> you know, it's like lift harder, lift heavier, go with your body, right? Don't try to always diet. You're not going to be me. Yeah. You're not, you know, no. like you're not going to be lean and f like me, you know, go with your strength, you know, and then you'll find that actually you're finding your own fitness. Mm -hmm. And I think it comes down to d labeling those things, right? Like yeah. what's your goal? Why do you want to get there? Why yeah. is that important to you? Sure. Also, who do you want to be? Yeah. Who do you think you are? Yeah. And who are you actually? Yeah. Those sure. are three different people. Yeah. <laughs> and if those if those aren't in alignment, yeah. right? Well, then of course you're all over the place. Like I've seen people do this all the time. Like they're very destructive. Maybe they're overweight, yeah. right? Like very overweight. Okay. And uh maybe they're they're uh you know, they're drinking, right? And yep. maybe they're in a high stress job where they sit all day. Yep. You know, and then they like after work, they eat like crap, you know, then they have a terrible quality relationship in their life that creates even more stress and more turbulence. So they cope with food even further. Yep. And it's like, and then they come here and they do like, they try to bust their ass in the gym and go so hard. And it's like, dude, no matter what you do, you're not going to mitigate all that stuff. Alignment. We need to fix it all. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? I mean, to your point too, it's like, I always tell people that are getting into business, have fitness in your life. Mm -hmm. You have to have it because otherwise, exactly like you're saying, you're going to grab the piece of cake. You're going to grab the bottle of whiskey, a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, and that's going to be your way of coping with the stress because I assure you there's tons of it, tons of stress. Mm -hmm. Like luckily, well, luckily, unluckily for me, I had fitness. 
as you know, I've kind of overdone it in my life. You know, I used to work out 26 times a week to deal with the stress of business. And now my body's pretty broken. So be careful with that too. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh yeah. But if you seek it, you'll lose it, right? Like if you yeah. seek money, you'll lose it. If yeah. you seek stress, you'll actually lose it. Yeah. Right. So if you actually inflict stress upon yourself, but with fitness, yeah. right, you'll actually lose it from your life. Yeah. And the fascinating thing is I always mention to people, fitness is a gateway to personal development. Sure. You know, it is 100%. It's never the destination, it's the vehicle. Yeah. Right. So it's like, it's an opportunity for you to grow and expand your life in many different ways. Yeah. Right. And it's something so simple and accessible for anybody to do. Why would you not start there? Uh, I agree 100% because it puts everything in alignment. We all start by wanting the fancy sports car and then we find like, transcendence, right? Mm -hmm. We all start by wanting the six pack and like looking good naked, mm -hmm. but then we find that it's just good for this. Mm -hmm. I don't work out anymore because I'm thinking, oh man, I hope I get bigger arms or I hope <laughs> yeah. I get like abs. I, I work out because like, I love it here. You know, that's what gets me going here. You know, it's like, I get my best ideas. I get my blood flowing. I got a smile on my face. Like that's why I do it. You, you know? know, and that right there too. I mean, because you, that wasn't the anticipated result when you first started, no. right? You did it because maybe you had just enjoyed the fitness element of it. Sure. Right? Okay. So enjoying something, even in business, is like just learning to enjoy your process yeah. is when you actually yield the results. But if you're chasing results, they never come. I right? couldn't agree more. Like, I want a six pack. I'm going to keep doing this. It's yeah. like, dude, listen, I, you can keep that as your intention. But if yeah. every single day you don't get a six pack, you're just getting failures every single day. Beautiful. And that's why you align it to mission and your version of success. Mm -hmm everything in life. You know, it's like, whether you know it folks or not, we're been basically talking about business the whole time, but it's also fitness. It's also life. It's, you know, like that's what's I think beautiful, you know, and then back to like approach the hard road with me really mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes in, I want abs in six weeks. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to actually I'll do say it? you're going to quit. Yeah. Because look, if, if you like hard work is necessary, yeah. right? 100%. But the problem is, is if you're not primed for hard work and you try to do it, you're yeah. going to quit. Totally. You got to build up your tolerance, you got to build up your endurance. And that comes with setting realistic expectations. And that comes with having self-awareness. Yeah. Right. So like if you want to work hard, you know, that's fantastic. Right. That will get you many places. But if you're working hard in the wrong direction and against yourself, it will do the opposite. Totally. Right? But you have to work hard to some degree. Right. Yeah. So it's like when I tell people, look, it's about timeline. Right. Like if we condense the timeline, things get un more unrealistic right? The work becomes even harder. You're not going to be able to do it, yeah. right? So let's set a realistic goal and work hard in that realistic goal and see how far you actually get. Because it's better to like extend, especially with something with fitness, it's better when the results are a surprise to you than a disappointment. Do you see what I'm saying? Totally. Like it's better when you're like, man, look, at I'm, I'm looking better. Everybody's complimenting me. Yeah. It's like, it's better when it's a surprise. It's not good when it's like, hey, do I look better yet? Do I look better yet? No, I don't look good yet. Yeah. I don't look as good as I want. It, you create a toxic mentality around it. You know, it brings to mind when it rains, it pours. And this has always happened in my life. Like success when it rains, it pours. Won't happen, won't happen. You're trying to force it. And then it's like the second like it starts happening, it's happening everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Or like, I hate to say this, but dating too. It's like, can't find a girlfriend, can't find a partner, you know? And like the second you find one, then they're everywhere, you know? It's mm -hmm. like, like, like getting into that rhythm, so to speak. I'm not saying with dating. I'm not saying go out and date yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, That's I not my advice, but like I'm- Finding what, the golden thread, yes, you know, almost. What, it's like the thing we can't find. And then all of a sudden it's everywhere when you mm -hmm. do find it. You know, and like that's, I think that's when you finally put things into alignment for yourself, that it is that smooth to bring it on board. That's a good, that's a good analogy for the awareness we were just speaking about too. Just like, it starts to become more apparent to you when you find it. Yeah. Right. It's like everything starts to, you know, like if you drive a Jeep, you start to see more Jeeps, you know? Oh, totally. I mean, one of my favorite speeches, do you know, you probably, you, there's not much I run by you these days that you have, don't know, but it's like uh, Steve Jobs, Yale speaks, her, uh, Yale. Yell speech. Do you know it? Which what was it about? Uh, uh, connecting the dots. Oh yeah, in the future. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I loved the way he talked about like these seemingly unrelated things in his life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like studying calligraphy in college, and then like he had some other ones too. And it's like he didn't make any sense at the time, right? Very random. You know, even my own life, I look at all the time. It's like biochemistry and you know, all this random stuff. And it's like now I look backward, or he looked backward, or mm -hmm. I'm sure you look backward, and you're like it all makes perfect of sense. Of course it does. And that's why I always am excited about the future. Yeah. I never have an impending sense of like uh, pessimism. Yeah. Right. It's always like, a, I can't wait till I get older. Uh -huh. You know, like I can't wait till I'm even older because look, I mean, you, t you look at your life 10 years ago, yeah. you know, was like, you know, the, how old are you? I'm 42. Okay. 42. Was a, yeah. was a 32 year old. You have shit on you now. You know, that's a tough one. And I, I don't mean to take you off your point because it's a good one, but it's like, I think about this a lot these days because like, you know how they say like only compete with the you, right? Mm -hmm. 
but what if the you of yesteryear was a fucking badass? Mm -hmm. I can't keep up with the me that was 32, 35 years old anymore. That's interesting. You're comparing it in one domain right now, though, because in other ways you've improved. Beautiful, because that's what I've had to start thinking about, right? It's like, so my fitness, for instance, it's like, I love that quote by, I think, Aristotle. Like, I feel bad for the man that never experienced the full potential of his body. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Socrates. Socrates, Socrates. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, poor Socrates. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like. He was a student of his, it's all right. And I was like, I get that. Like, the things that my body was capable at 35 years old, like, was like unbelievable like i couldn't believe what i could do mm -hmm. i was faster than anybody I was stronger than anybody like i did like like could eat workouts you know it's like but then i like think back and it's like i can't keep up with that guy mm -hmm. that, that guy used to also work 100 hours a week in his business mm -hmm. you know it's like that guy would go from running his business to opening a chemistry book and studying till he fell asleep and then waking up and taking an organic chemistry test the next same day mm -hmm. i cannot possibly keep up with that guy mm -hmm. but to your point it's like now i have the education of those years mm -hmm. And so I keep up in a different way. I'm so much smarter, you know? You need to read Mastery by uh, Robert Greene. I've, re I've heard, I was actually looking at eyeing that lately. So that, that book is very good. He talks about finding your life's task and you go through stages like an apprenticeship phase and then you go through like, you know, a phase where you're actually practicing it and then it goes through like a mastery and expert phase. And he talks about like ebbing and flowing through that process. Yeah. And it kind of is a lot about what you were just speaking about. It's like, you think the old you is like, oh, this unstoppable force because sure. you were younger and you had, you know, more fire in you. But yeah. you don't realize the wisdom that you've gained from doing all that now it, it, don't even think about in terms of physical and energy capacity. Think about in terms of if you were to both sit down, what each of you know about business, have a conversation. It, and and to your point, so right. You know, and it's like, and like, that's one of my biggest struggles. And I haven't been super open about it. It's like with all this stuff, which mm -hmm. scared me. Right. And it's like, I was volunteering, you know, I was like working out 26 times a week, but I was volunteering with my body, volunteered mm -hmm. at the children's home, lifting furniture, volunteered at the animal shelter. They liked me because I could carry the big dogs when they were asleep from getting neutered. You know, it's like, and that was my way of giving to the world and helping and all that stuff. And I actually broke my back at the children's home and, um, and then like went away everything I thought I loved in life. I loved, loved, loved training, training with my friends. I loved being able to be physical. And then like, it was forcing me into a position where I needed to use this more mm -hmm. to be helpful. Right. And it's like, now I'm starting foundations. Now I'm speaking about business and life and things like that. Cause I have to help with this now because I can't help with these as much anymore. Yes. So like, to your point, that's like, that's the journey I've had to be on and I fought it, you know, it's because I'd rather still be the 35 year old me out there doing it with my body. But you know, this is what that's I have fascinating. now. I'm actually, I was the opposite. Really? Yeah. I always, I had to start with this uh -huh. and now I'm going to have to do more with this. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Because in yeah. terms of business, it requires a lot more elbow grease in certain dimensions. Yeah. Right? And uh, just like from from early on in life, I, I utilize social leverage in order to change my position because I grew up fucking poor as yeah. hell. You know? Yeah. Like nothing. And it's yeah. like I, and the only way for people to not treat me a certain way is for me to change the way I spoke to them because I had terrible clothes. They knew where I lived, you know? So changing, you know, my positioning based on social leverage. So I learned how to use this and my words to get me to certain levels, yeah. right? And then when I was at certain levels, I was like, shit, now I need to start building with this, you know? Interesting. So how much of that has led to your success today or your drive today? You know, honestly, I have conversations with, you know, people that are almost double my age, mm -hmm. you know, and they haven't quite found a stroke of happiness in their life. Yeah. You know, and to me, every single day I wake up happy, Yeah. you know, and it's not to say that I don't experience negative emotions, but it's like, I have optimism in my life, no matter what happens Yeah. because I'm okay with who I am. Yeah. And a lot of the people aren't because they were focused on external means their entire life. And I'm not saying I'm a unique situation. A lot of people do this, yeah. right? But sometimes they just do it in reverse. Mm -hmm. Like they wait till they hit their fifties and they have a midlife crisis, which is the popping event in their life mm -hmm. where they're like, okay, I need to make a transition because I don't even like who I am. Yeah. It, like I'm 50. What have I done with my life? I have ignored part of what it is that I am passionate about. Yeah. You know, I pushed away because I thought it was either socially unacceptable or I didn't feel like people were going to accept me for who I was. Right. Yeah. And now it's like, it's starting to surface as something negative. Right. Yeah. So then they start to buy all this like random shit to try to satiate and shove it down more. Yeah. Right. So they wait till later in life to have that transition point. I think I had that transition point early on in life because I had to, you know, I'm with you. I mean, that's maybe the gift. But the, the problem is with people that are raised rough is a lot of times it destroys them before they get that chance. That's true. They make the mistake. 
right? And that's actually a little bit about what this shows about and like where I work in these days, especially is like helping the youth understand it's like, don't fuck your life up mm -hmm. in that little period because it's not all of life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and knowing you can have it too. And that adversity that we go through in our youth, you know, it's like that actually builds you perfectly for everything in life. Mm -hmm. You just can't let it destroy you because like, honestly, how much is a business problem? People used to always ask me, it's like, Tyler, this horrible thing just happened in the business. Like, how are you so calm? Mm -hmm. They'd always ask me how I'm so calm. And it's like, well, well, number one, it's not going to do me any good because my people are watching me and mm -hmm. I need to inspire them to be calm and like, let's fix the problem. And, you know, but number two, it's like, I've dealt with some really bad stuff in my life. <laughs> yeah, do you think that business thing? Yeah. And like, that's where I want you to get to like is underdogs. It's like, you're dealing with some stuff and I'm sorry for that. You know, it's like, but at the same time, it's like later on, that is going to be like part of your success. Mm -hmm in one way, it's gonna build this, it's gonna build this, but at the same time, it's gonna be like, this little business problem that I'm having, you know, it's like, that's how I can tell how where somebody's from, mm -hmm. is like how they react to a small problem. Yes, yeah, uh, like a stressor. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you re overreact to a small thing, like a, a thing that doesn't really even matter in this world, then it tells me you were raised with a golden spoon, mm -hmm. that you've never really had any real problems in your life, you know, and so like that's, to me, like one of the biggest messages, I want more underdogs making it, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I want them making it because they're the ones that change things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like people like you and I that come from like some stressful situations some bad information that builds in empathy too, to your mm -hmm. point. From oh, earlier. absolutely. You have to think in a different way, but I, I also think that the environment impacts people in different ways, depending on where you're at in your life, depending yeah. on if you're ready, depending on genetics, you know, yeah. depending on a lot of factors. Yeah. Right. But I mean, it's up to you to learn how to deal with and manage the problems that you're dealt, yeah. you know, and like being an underdog, being somebody who's at a disadvantage, right? Like it sucks sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But you also have to understand it's part of what crafts your character and you're, it's an opportunity that you were blessed with in order to deal with these stressors and this disadvantage, because when you come out of that on the other side, as long as you stick it out, right, you're going to be that much further ahead than people have been given shit. So beautiful. And so well put, it actually will be the key to your success. Mm -hmm. You know, I totally believe in it. And it's like, it's funny, like I made a video the other day about like being a kid and being embarrassed of food stamps, you know, like super embarrassed, oh, yeah. you know, it's like, and like the little paper tickets that they used to give you. I'm so <laughs> glad they give them the cards now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like more humane in my mind. So embarrassed about it, right? But it's like, not only was my like, time when I was like an adult and could use cash for food, like a life-changing experience for me. You know, I still go enjoy, I never went to a restaurant like once as a kid too. We couldn't afford it. You know, it's like, I enjoy every restaurant I go to still to mm -hmm. this day. Like it gives me that enjoyment. You know, it's like, like, that's just like one very superficial thing, but I can enjoy it so much, you know? And it's like, at the same time, now I get to, I can tell people like, look, yes, my mom had food stamps growing up. Oh, you yeah. know, it's like, and now like I've been able to do what I have in my life, you know, and now I can wear it like a badge of honor as opposed to an embarrassment. I, you know, I, to add to your point there, I like, I, I experienced something similar with that. Yeah. So like, I totally understand that. Like the pride gets in the way of like accepting assistance, yeah. even when you're young, because you're just like, I don't want to be identified as sure. that, uh -huh. you know? Um, but yeah, I was the same way. We had every form of government assistance I could think of, yeah. you know, and it's yep. like, I would get like free lunches and school and shit yep. and I wouldn't do it because I, why? I had no idea why I would yeah. go home and eat the same thing every single day, which was, uh, you know, Kroger brand discounted cocoa puffs, you know, <laughs> had that three times a day as a kid, just malnourished as hell. Couldn't think straight in school, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that pride thing, man. I mean, it, it'll, it, you know, it could be your downfall. So like when you're an underdog too, even in a situation to where like you have less, it's like, dude, listen. Having less is a blessing because it creates creativity. Like creativity only comes out of when you need to be resourceful, yeah. right? And resourcefulness only comes out of when you have a lack of yes. scarcity, right? Beautiful. Because, you know, like I actually get shit about this quite often if I post this online. I think underdogs are more prepared for success than the golden spoon people. Because number one, it's like exactly what you're saying around resources, scarcity. It's like what we were just talking about around the problems, a small mm -hmm. a, a business problem. Now you can figure out logically because it's not as big as the problems that you dealt with. And then it's like you're used to, you know, it's like you're used to living off nothing. You're used to working at a young age mm -hmm. to have something. Work ethic is the key, I think, to everything in life, Absolutely. in my opinion. And so you've give, been given those three skills in spades. You just got to not get destroyed and you got to build this because to your point, you got to build this too. You mm -hmm. know, it's like you can build all those skills that are amazing, but if you don't know how to use them at that point, you're not going to use them for your success. Huh. That is an interesting point too. I mean, it, it just makes me consider it's like, 
you know, people idolize rich figures all the time, yeah. right? But they don't idolize the lower class. No. Look, they're survivalists. Totally. Like they know how to survive better than anybody. Absolutely. You know? Like they don't know they they maybe not be business savvy, but I you know what thinking back to it, I did I learned survival skills from my family because when you're middle class, low middle class, or actually we were lower class, yeah. but you ain't paying somebody to come fix your shit. No, you have to figure it out. You know what I mean? And that's why we've got it all flipped, in my opinion. the The skill set that you're building by being raised poor is actually a better skill set for success in business. It's utility in every way, right? It's like. It, the only way you can argue with me on that is you can say, well, they have connections. It's like, yeah, but if you're their connections and you have a better work ethic, your work ethic will outdo their connections. Oh, of course. Your you work know, ethic will outdo their initial because fundraising. Because it lasts. It does. Connections don't always last. Yeah. That's why it's like, I like we need to flip, flip this script because I promise you, like underdogs are more prepared. A lot of what we do in the business world here, like helping underdogs for free is like exactly under that premise. They're seasoned. Yeah. You know, they're seasoned in a different way. Yeah. And I think when you take away the accolades and distractions, right? Yeah. Like some people will say, oh, yeah, we're going to start, a, I want to start a business. I actually trained a guy. Listen, his dad's a billionaire. Yeah. Okay. I trained a guy whose dad gave him $200 million to start his company. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> $200 million. Yeah. yeah. That's insanity. Yeah. Right. And it's like, and it was like nothing. Here yeah. you go. Start a company. He was like 20 something years old. How do you do with it? F fucking horribly. Yeah. At first started yeah. tanking everything. Yeah. Right. Then he had to hire some people to come in to help him stay afloat. You like know, they're, they're starting <laughs> to stabilize, but like, at, you know, yeah, that's insane though. It, it, it is crazy, you know, and like, but, and that's my point too. It's like, you start with a bunch of money and I've talked about this on this show before. It's like, you start with a bunch of money, you spend a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. It's actually better to start with not as much money. People don't think that either, but it's like, if you start with a bunch of money, you're going to go out and like, oh, I need this fancy painting. Yes. I need this couch. I need this, you know, and you're not focusing on all the ways that you can actually get ahead with nothing. Like one of my favorite stories, I've told it on this show several times, but I want to run it by you is like, there was a guy that wanted to be in the belt business, right? And the belt machine cost $200,000 or something like that. He had like 10 grand. He's like, I don't have it. And he could have said, I quit. I can't be in the belt business or whatever. Instead, he went to Home Depot or something. He grabbed parts. He built a machine that would produce the belts for $10,000. That not only got him into the business that he didn't think he could get into, but that machine became the machine that they now use to this day. <laughs> that reinvented that machine machine. It's like people need to think about that stuff more, you know, when it comes to business. It's not about the easy road. It's not about the quick course. It's not about the like not having the resources. It's about building the mind and the body to do mm -hmm. it. I'm convinced of it. Right, because you got to put yourself through that pressure in order to grow. Totally. You know, and it's interesting because sometimes I mean, even like something like um, an MRI machine was like made by accident. I mean, like they made yeah. it for like NASA's purposes and they're like, well, we can't even use this. And then the yeah. medical industry's like, shit, we'll use that. You know? yeah. And now look, they're making trillions of dollars off it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's well, insane. And you know the story of Rockefeller and oil originally too, right? How he bought up everything. Yeah. Well, happened. also he like, um, what we use now as gasoline was, a, you know, he originally started in lamp oil. Mm -hmm. Right. And they had a derivative of lamp mm -hmm. oil and he hired a chemist and actually came up with what we now use as gasoline. Mm -hmm. He invented a product from the scrap, basically. <laughs> and now that's what we use throughout the world because lamp oil was phasing out. He had to come up with something. That's interesting. There's a quote by Henry Ford that it was said, uh, he goes, if I would have asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Beautiful. You know, and it, it's so true. To that point, I don't want to go too far down Rockefeller Road, but um, Henry Ford was actually using ethanol back mm -hmm, then, mm -hmm. you know, and like that was a big reason that uh, prohibition happened. Everybody thought it was like morality oh, and drinking. Oh, no, never is, right? It was Rockefeller it's that was behind thing. it. It's the same thing with cannabis in the U.S. I mean, yeah. it was the same thing. I mean, you get like agricultural businesses that are part, sorry, part of a certain political party and they bottleneck it. They're like, yeah. sorry, you can't do this anymore. Yeah. When you yeah. underlyingly look at things, it's like when you lift that curtain, which you and I are all too good at doing, <laughs> it gets, you know, there's always some sort of reward system involved is let's just put it that way. So well, there's a, there's something a, a marketing mentor told me a long time ago. He says, when you, uh, when you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah. So like yeah. when you can see marketing and advertising, you can't unsee it. Yeah. So th now to your point, when you're talking about how people are like putting all these bad ads and stuff like that, and like they're, you know, manipulative with their sales tactics or whatever, yeah. whatever have you, it's like, you can't, you can't unsee it. And yeah. some people just think it's like, oh, this guy's got a lot of energy or whatever the case may be. He's very passionate. It's like, oh, dude, he's selling you something. Yeah. You, you don't even realize it right now. Yeah. You know? 
And, and like, I'm all good with people selling stuff. I just wish that there was more people that like cared to make it actually a good product instead oh, of what okay. people want to hear. I, let, let me let me rephrase that. I'm, yeah. I think everybody needs to understand selling. It's part. It's an essential element of business. Totally. I'm saying some people sell just to sell. They just yeah. care about the transaction and that's it. They don't care about your the fulfillment of it because they don't have to deal with it. Agreed. Right? Like they just kick it out. Right? Yeah. And it's like, if you don't care about your customer or client and you create a bad relationship with them, that's going to be more harmful to you over time than the benefit of making money from them was. That's where you and I like totally totally agree and it's counterintuitive to what people are teaching around sales these days really like like that like it doesn't sound like it when you word it that way but i like we both agree on that it's like most of what people are teaching these days around sales is more about like how can i get the sale yes. as opposed to how can i take care of somebody with this yeah, it's sale? A selfish intent mm -hmm. you know and like you're as long as you are transactional it's like look how you do one thing is how you do everything yeah it's just it's too complex for some people to understand and translate that to other tasks yeah. right like for instance if like if you're somebody who's a constant go-getter it's like you're, you're probably a go-getter with most things in life sure. maybe you're a go-getter with women yeah you know maybe you're a go-getter and you're, you're you know you're a polygamist i don't know you yeah. know what i'm saying like <laughs> yeah. it's like who knows what yeah. you, it's like you don't know how that behavior translates unless you have enough self-awareness to identify that it is translating that's actually perfect because in your point, it's like going after a bunch of women, you know, like that's not a good thing, mm -hmm. you know, and that's actually counterproductive in so many ways, you know, but then at the same point, it's like, that's a success trait in business, you mm -hmm. know, or in fitness and the other things. And so to your point, that's that actually, it's making me think a little bit today because those traits can actually be good in some arenas and bad in some arenas. And mm -hmm. if you have those, no matter what, you got to be a little bit careful about how you use it. Absolutely. That's beautiful. We almost ought to do a uh, whole discussion on sales one day too. Oh yeah, I, I think it's fun. Be, I think it would be helpful for people. Yeah, I definitely. I used to actually try to teach sales to some of the uh, trainers at Lifetime. Oh, is, is kinda, that right? I, 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 you know, it's it's hard because people don't understand the point of it really. Uh -huh. And it's like it's not about a script. You know, yeah. it's not about like memorizing words. No, it's, it's about hey, why don't we have a conversation real quick? And let's find out about you. Exactly. Right. And then like, then let's talk about how I can help you. And the, the thing about business people, you know, is like, especially it's like you choose the damn product. Mm -hmm. Why would you choose anything other than something you're obsessed in and think is good product? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then all you have to do is relay the fact that like, I think this thing is amazing. And here's why, you know? Yeah. Not but, that you're a piece of shit for not buying it. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. No kidding. Like, <laughs> and then like, tell me all the things that you want out of this product. And I'll tell you whether it does that or not. Mm -hmm. And then the way it does it, you it's know, education. Yeah. You know, it's education in a conversation. Yeah. You know, and it's about empathy and just, you know, being able, like, you know, Simon Sinek. Yeah. All right. So he talks a lot about that in business, like just having empathy. Yeah. You know, like understanding that business isn't business, it's people. Right. And to like our throwback to the conversation earlier, I think the world's more ready for that than ever. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that people want to see good things out well, of Well, Gen business. Z actually cares more about that. They're the artist generation, is what they're called. Interesting. So they're not, so the artist generation is the ones who come along and make things pretty for us. Yeah. You know, like think about, uh, you know who the Toltec Society was? No. So the four book called The Four Agreements by Miguel something or other. I forget what it was, like Diaz or something. I don't know. Uh -huh. um, anyway, he, he talks about the Toltec Society. It was a society of in Mexico of all scientists and artists. Because if everything was just science, it would be blocky buildings. Everything would be pretty ugly. Yeah. It would just be functional, right? Yeah. But without, uh, without like the artists, it wouldn't be beautiful, you know? But without the scientists, it wouldn't be functional, you know? So it's like you need both to balance each other out. Come on, go back to the yin and yang thing too. As what well. one of my favorite idea? I love that we're running across all this stuff. Interdisciplinary studies, right? Mm -hmm. The great idea comes from any, anywhere. So in your business, you should get everybody in the same room because to your point, it's like that's a very cut and dry one, less the science and the art. But to the point, it's like we all have different lenses, backgrounds, everything. We can all lend a solution to a problem, and the seemingly person that you wouldn't think would come up with the solution probably usually will. Mm -hmm. The out of the box thinker, so to speak. That's why it's like so important to get like people involved on projects. Like I'm a firm believer, like in my businesses, like when we'll have a new like creative project in some of my old businesses, I'd get all 40 people in the same room. I didn't care if you were the receptionist, like you took out the trash. I didn't care. Let's all talk about this problem together and let's have fun in finding well, the Well, because people have different perspectives and, you know, maybe the garbage man has some good input. Yeah. You know? Maybe we, he sees your customers leaving and being disappointed with the products because he's taking out the trash. You know, <laughs> who knows? Absolutely. You know? It, it, it could come from anywhere, you know? And then like, we all have a different lens on the world, you know? It's like, and that lens on the world leads us to have preconceived notions about anything, mm -hmm. right? And so like- Bias. Yeah. Yes.
Exactly. So, and then like being aware of that lens, you know, I try to be drastically aware of my lens at times. It's like, am I seeing this because I don't like it or because I think it's something different? You know, there was a uh, famous quote by Abraham Lincoln too. He goes, uh, I don't like that man very much. I should get to know him better. <laughs> that is a great, so quote. it's like seeing through your own biases and lenses, you yeah. know, like sometimes the things that you like you put in front of yourself actually blind you. I agree. 100%. If somebody is like, actually like interested in like, getting involved in fitness mm -hmm. or I like, I want to, I think this discussions went really well hand in hand with business. Mm -hmm. It's like, like, what would you tell them right now? Like, like I want you to get started. Yeah. Uh huh. I think it first comes down to like, uh, I actually talked to Misha a little bit about this too. Is like, you know, it comes down to your why, like, why are you doing it? Yeah. Right. Why, like, why do you want to do fitness? Like, why, why do you want to get in shape? Like, why do you want to be healthy? Because like when you go into it with this unrealistic expect expectation of what you think is going to happen from it or like what you want to happen from it and it doesn't happen, well, then it creates a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. Why are you doing this? Because when things get hard and shit hits the fan, you need to have something that keeps you going just yes. like in business. Agreed. It's like, well, what's your purpose in doing this? Are you just trying to make money from people? Well, guess yeah. what? It's too hard for you to just want to make money from people. Yes. Right. You're going to quit. Yeah. Right? There's easier ways to do that. Yeah. So you need to have like a strong reason why, yeah. you know, it really needs to come down to like, what's the intention? Like, what's the purpose? Totally. And also how, how long will it take you to find entertainment value in fitness? Like coming here because you enjoy it, working out because you enjoy it, you look forward to it because that's when results truly come. Just like in business, when you tr truly enjoy business and working on your business, well, guess what? Results fly. Yeah. Things happen very quickly because it doesn't matter if you make progress or not on it. You're still enjoying the process. Yeah. Right. And that's when the, the results fly in. Yeah. So that's absolutely beautiful. And I knew like that was going to go hand in hand with perfectly what I would say about business mm -hmm. and like getting into it. There's so many similarities. And that's why I really wanted to have the talk today about like the way you go into a mindset of fitness and the way you go into business and how well they shake handshake. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they're both they, they both have to do with the essential human animal, right? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, it's like a business is a person who had an idea that created a concept that is put into the world as a product or service, right? Yeah. And like fitness is the same way. It's like you're, you're using... Uh, yourself as the uh, almost like the instrument or the tool, you know, in that domain to change in some way, shape or form, right? Like everything is predicated off the person. Yeah, right. So like, no matter what, even if it's business or fitness, it doesn't matter it all relates to your experience of the thing. And that's where the world has changed and why we need the mind so much more because it used to be about survival, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were a blacksmith 200 years ago, it's like your body was going to be adapted to being a blacksmith. Oh, yeah. Right. Like your mind was going to be <laughs> adapted to being a blacksmith. But in this day and age, you know, it's like it's different. We have to make choices with our body and we have to make choices with our mind because automatically like my family was all ancestral farmers. You know, like if I didn't get out there and get into the gym these days, I wouldn't get that deep nagging need to be physical. Mm -hmm. Right. If I didn't like and then like I have the choice. I don't I'm not a farmer anymore. It's not about a survival every That's day of making my my food happen right it's more about what's going to get me in life the food but also belonging and, <laughs> and feeling and you know like um importance you know what's going to feel important good work to me that's that is a, there's another book called the human zoo by desmond morris okay I, i've heard of that one i haven't read so it the, this guy was a, a zoologist who studied animals and uh -huh. he particularly studied the human animal interesting and he said look if you take animals and you put them in a zoo and you isolate their social setting in their environment they start to have very weird behaviors yeah behaviors you would never see in those animals ever in nature yeah right what do you think happens to people when you condense them into a city or condense them into their house right and like when their social animals are meant to roam around and move they start to develop weird behaviors totally you know so that it's a, it's kind of like like referring on to your point there like this it's a book that basically explains that concept we're more right? animal than we think you know, like really come down to it. It's like, look at when you put people in certain situations. I'm like, I always say it's like, it's one thing to be a good person when you have, right? Mm -hmm. and what, what, quite another when it's all taken away, who are you? Kind of mm -hmm. like that old Ed, Eddie Murphy show, right? When he doesn't have anything, who are you actually? Mm -hmm. You know, when you have nothing and you're down and out, are you still like, like a good person? Are yes. you not robbing people? You know, it's like, you know, it's like, you got to really know who you are in those circumstances. And that's how you find out somebody really is. That comes down to character, yeah. right? Like I said, there's personality and character that drive the human animal, yeah. right? So like your personality is what you show people to the world. It's how you socialize, right? But your character is who you are. Now, if you have a really strong personality and weak character, you're going to get yourself in situations that are like very bad for you. Yeah. Because maybe you talk yourself into something that you can't actually do, yep. right? Totally. Or like if you have, you know, like a weak personality, well, then maybe opportunities won't come to you because people aren't attracted to you. Yeah. 
You see? So it's like, it's either or, yeah. you know? So it's like, you need to have a fair balance of both of those things. I agree completely. Especially in business. There's something that I want you to weigh in on before we like wrap, wrap up mm -hmm. today, but there's a guy out there that was in a, on a business podcast recently, and he's um, some sort of like online entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, and he says that the gym is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and that's fascinating. Yeah, I thought you'd like this. And he says that if you don't make $10,000 a month, there's no way you should waste your time in the gym. Um, and he also says that like, since he makes money, that being fit or anything isn't a problem because he'll hire people to protect him. I would say, let me follow you around and see your life. And I'll tell you if I want your advice or not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I would just start, start there because yeah. look, if, if you honestly believe that like yeah. deep down in your heart, then there's nothing I could do to change your mind anyway. Yeah. Right. So I'm just going to let you deal with the repercussions of that later in life. Because here's the thing is if you don't focus on your wellness early on, you're going to be forced to focus on your illness later. Totally. Right. So it will catch up with you. Yeah. And if you don't prioritize your body, well, that's not wealth at all. Yeah. You know, the definition of wealth was had to do with your health. It didn't have to do with the material assets that you owned. Yeah. Right. Because those things could come and go. Guess what happens? Every currency in the world has failed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every currency in the world has failed. The U.S. dollar is failing. It's on a failing downslope. Right. Yeah. We get something like AI comes in, makes its own currency. We have to use that now. Yeah. So all the assets you own are now irrelevant. Yes. What skills have you built? Yep. You know, on top of that too, it's like Steve Jobs when he was sick, going through cancer. You think he wouldn't have given up every dollar in his world to be better? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. Oh, he said it at the end of his life. Yeah, he did. And that's why, like, I like I looked at the comments to that. I don't quite often do that, but I was like, I was amazed at how many people were buying that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, and that's sad to me because most of my enjoyment in life comes from being able to move my body around. Yes. Well, it should because look, when you die, you know, yeah. later in life. Do you want to go a peaceful way? Like, or do you want to go in a very harsh way when you have nobody around you that cares about you? Sure. Right? So like, where do you, how do you want your life to be? You know, and, and, and also d just to, to add on to that point is like, you know, if you spend your whole life focused on just one thing, you become top heavy. It's like people that train just their upper body and have their legs, yeah. right? You're going to have a lower back problems. You're going to have something later in life, yep. right? Now, when your health goes sideways, you're going to have to rely on people that are going to see you as just a client or a patient, and they're not going to really care about you that much. Yeah, It's just the unfortunate truth because you've dug yourself into a hole that maybe, maybe they don't know how to get you out of anymore yeah. because you neglected your health for 30 years and focused only so solely on making money. To make 10 grand a month. Yeah. And it's like, and what is that doing for you? Yeah. It, it's it's crazy too. It's like one last thing. I really want people to understand this because I think it's so important to be healthy in mm -hmm. life and to be have find a fitness. And that doesn't mean lifting weights. That doesn't mean it has to be boxing. Yes. Find your own thing, right? Mm -hmm. And and make it be active. But it's like I was living in Greece. I went on this like cruise last minute. You know, it's like it went last minute for a little bit of nothing to all these islands. And little did I know I was going to be the youngest person on the boat. You know, <laughs> like and but <laughs> like I'm watching all these old people that have like worked, and it made me so sad. They've worked their whole life, the nine to five job. You know, like the thankless garbage man job, most likely, and to be in Greece. And then like they couldn't even walk far enough to see the you know the beautiful sights that can be seen, you know? And it's like, and that to me is so sad mm -hmm. that people aren't focusing a little bit more on their fitness through their life. Cause my dad's 75 years old. He just got hit by a car on his rollerblades the other day, he walked out of it, right? It's like, he's tough, you know, because he's made fitness a part of his life, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, so it's sad to me. It's like, you, the only way you can enjoy your life. And I tell people all the time, and I'm sure you feel this too. It's like, don't work out for the six pack at 20. No, no. Don't work out to be beautiful. Don't work out to like have the abs, have the chest. Work out because your 70 year old you will thank you. There's also one quote I think that could tie everything you just said real tightly. Okay. Right. And it's fitness doesn't add years to your life. It adds life to your years. Beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. I know we got a little off track on the hard work subjects, but I think actually like beautiful conversation. <laughs> yeah. Really appreciate you being here. We're going to have to do another one on of sales, course. I think sometime, because yeah. I know we're really like-minded in that way. Um, anything else you want to add before I wrap it up? No, I think, I mean, if you're, if you feel like in your life, you're struggling with something, right? Like you can't identify what it is. Always go back to the source. You know, fitness is a gateway to personal development. And I think I have never met a single person that's went inside the gym and had a good workout and felt bad afterwards. Yeah. Right. It's your body will chemically react to that. You know, you'll have a positive experience. And like, if you don't know where else to focus in your life right now, it's most likely that. Yeah, absolutely. 
What's your Instagram handle? I, I'm we're friends, but I don't know. How I think to it's just my first that. and last name, like Gino Savoni. Okay, yeah. yeah. Check out Gino on Instagram. You like you have some great content. Mm -hmm. You're a wealth of knowledge too. Mm -hmm. It's like like I said, I don't. There's not, almost not a book I've read that you haven't. You know, mm -hmm. and so um, so deep, so many levels. You put it all together. I thank you so much for being here today. Of course, man. We'll have to do it again. Oh, absolutely. And to you, underdogs, bootstrappers, game changers. Hope you got a lot out of the conversation. I love having my friends here, and we just kind of like chit chat and like I get something out of this every single time too, you know? And so, um, but I really want you to think today about how we related business and fitness. And I really also want you to think about your health and your fitness too, because if you can make all the money in the world, you'd still be wishing that you had the fitness at the end of the day, if you don't. So, um, until next time, folks, we'll see ya.